Welcome to Dr. Piercy's Introduction to the JSP Expression Language. In this video, we'll see what the JSP Expression Language is and how it improves on JSP tags. You'll learn how the JSP Expression Language can be used to further separate U logic from business logic in a dynamic network application. The JSP Expression Language was introduced with J2EE version 2.0 to provide an easy way to access application data stored in Java Beans components. JSP Expression Language is an improvement over the use of basic JSP tags as it provides more functionality. With JSP Expression Language you can create arithmetic and logical expressions, access the values of Java Beans, use custom designed functions and tags. JSP Expression Language offers several advantages over earlier JSP tags and JavaScriptlets. Namely, it provides concise access to stored objects. Expression Language replaces older JSP tags with more concise notation. There is a shorthand notation for bean properties. Accessing and modifying bean properties is made easier with Expression Language tags and dot notation. Simple access to collection elements. Unlike JSP tags, expression language tags can also be used to access collection elements like arrays, lists, or maps. Succinct access to parameters, cookies, and attributes at various levels of scope. To access the standard types of scoped data, you can use one of several predefined implicit objects. A small but useful set of simple math and conditional operators. To manipulate and test objects within expression language expressions, automatic type conversion, the expression language removes the need for most typecast and for much of the code that parses strings as numbers. Empty values instead of error messages. In most cases, missing values or null pointer exceptions result in empty strings, not thrown exceptions. Note that you cannot use expression language to create an instance of a Java bean if it doesn't already exist. This is not really a problem since instance creation is typically handled by a servlet and not in a JSP. Nor can you set properties of a Java bean. Some consider this an advantage of expression language as it forces a further separation of concerns between the view logic and the business logic. Like JSP tags of earlier J2EE versions, JSP expression language relies on the use of Java beans. Recall that a Java bean is an ordinary Java class that conforms to the following rules. A Java bean must have a public, no argument constructor, a default constructor. The Java bean class attributes must be accessed via accessor and mutator methods that follow a standard naming convention. The Java bean class should implement the serializable interface. A Java bean provides a named attribute that can be accessed by the user of the object. The attribute can be of any Java data type, including classes that you define. In our case, the user of the object will be a JSP. The basic expression language access syntax is shown here. Note the delimiters, the dollar sign, curly brace, and ending in the curly brace. The JSP engine will notice that anything in between these curly braces is an expression language expression. Here's an example. Assume that we have a Java bean called employee and that an employee will have a property called hourly rate. In this example, we are simply accessing the value of the hourly rate for the current employee Java bean. You might note that nothing about the scope is evident here. It turns out that the scope is implied it's possible that we can access Java Bean properties with explicit scope. If we do so, then we still use the dot notation in between the braces and we simply indicate the scope at the beginning. For example, if the Java Bean is stored as request state, we would use the keyword request scope followed in dot notation by the Java Bean name and then the property. So with this example, we are getting the same hourly rate from the employee Java bean, which is stored as a request attribute. Now there are four possibilities for the scope. These are all accessed by accessing some of the implicit objects that are available to us with our JSP and the expression language. 
You have probably already been using a request object and its methods such as get parameter or set attribute. Similarly, you might have already been using the session object. Those are the same objects listed here in the second and third line of this table. Now, expression language treats all of these as a map. That means if we provide a key, such as the property name, it will return a result. We'll talk more about maps in the next slide. For now, notice that we have four implicit objects that deal with the scope of the attribute. Page scope stores the attributes that are only available to the current JSP page. Request scope stores attributes that are available to the current request and can be used by many components up until the time that the response for that request is sent. Session scope uses the session object and stores attributes that are available throughout the context of the session. And finally, we have application scope. And this could store attributes that are available to the whole application. For our example at the top, this basically replaces the JavaScriptlet shown here. You can easily note that the expression language tag is much more concise and streamlined than the equivalent JavaScriptlet. Similarly, this expression language tag will supplant the two older JSP tags shown here. Now, there are some basic rules for using expression language. The scope can be implicit or explicit. This means that if you do not specify explicitly the scope, the JSP engine will search all scopes from most local page to most general application. So most of the time you may not even need to specify the scope. Dot notation is used to separate scope, if specified, the object, and the property. We'll see some additional notation that can be used with other types of expression language tags. When dot notation is used, the object specified must be either a Java bean or a map type. When dot notation is used, the final element must specify a Java bean property or the map key. In this example, we are explicitly defining the scope. We are then specifying the Java bean employee. And then finally, we're providing a Java bean property. One final note, if there are no naming conflicts, you can often get by with letting scope be implicit. You should, however, use explicit scope if you have naming conflicts at various levels of scope. We can also use JSP expression language to access values stored in a Java collection. A collection is simply an object that groups multiple elements into a single unit. Much like a basic array, collections can be used to store and work with aggregated data. Think of things that naturally form a group, such as a deck of cards, a music playlist, or the classic example of a telephone directory, which you can think of as a map mapping the names to telephone numbers. The Java Collections framework includes interfaces and classes that can make it easier to work with various types of collected data. Some of the most common Java connection components include the collection, which is the root interface in the collection hierarchy. A collection object represents a group of objects. These are known as its elements. You cannot directly implement the collection interface, however. The collection hierarchy provides implementations of more specific sub-interfaces, like set and list. A map is an object that maps keys to values. A map cannot contain duplicate keys. Each key can map to at most one value. Think of a map as a kind of lookup table with two columns. You look down the first column of the key, and then get back the associated value in the second column. Another important collection that is often used is the array list. The array list actually inherits or extends the list object. An array list is a resizable array implementation of the list interface. I like to think of the array list as kind of a regular array with superpowers. It has methods that allow you to do much more than can be accomplished with a regular array. For example, an array list can expand as needed to hold more stuff. Keep in mind that underlying all of these interfaces and classes is the basic array Java structure, which you can also access via JSP expression language. Let's look at some examples of syntax for working with Java collections. Here we see the syntax for a map. It's very similar to connecting to a property of a Java bean. If we want to state it, we can explicitly put the scope, 
for example, the request scope. This would be followed using dot notation by the name of the particular map object, followed by the key. Alternatively, you could use this notation. These are both equivalent. The explicit scope, if needed, the map name, then in square brackets you put the map key. I generally prefer this format as it reminds me that the map is a type of collection and we are capable of accessing most collection objects using the second type of notation. Let's see those in action with a particular map. Assume that we have a mapping or a collection of employees. Each one is keyed based on their employee ID. Here my notation says that we have a request attribute which is a map called employees. And if I provide an employee ID that will show me the particular name of the employee. With the alternative notation and usually the one I prefer we have request scope, the name of the map, employees, and we provide the employee ID in square brackets to get the result we need. For an array list we can access it using the square bracket notation. Assume then that the array list is stored as one of our scope. In this example, I'm using implicit scope instead of explicitly listing which scope it's on. Recall, if I use implicit scope, that means that only one array list at any level of scope can have the name list name. Here we'd specify the list name and then in square brackets we would provide something to indicate which element of the array list we want to access. It could be a variable that holds the value or it could be a literal number that goes there. Alternatively, we can include the index in quotes, or we can have an expression that returns the index. Let's see some examples of connecting to an array list. Reading from left to right, we see we can access the first element using the name of the list and putting a 1 index in the square brackets. The second one is pretty much the same thing, but it's okay to surround that with double quotes if we prefer. And then the final one, I've substituted a variable i. Perhaps this is the counter for a for loop or some other thing to indicate and set i before this particular notation is implemented. Often, one of the properties of a stored object is another object. For example, imagine an account Java Bean that includes as a field a loan Java Bean object. We might wish to access one of the loan's properties, such as the interest rate. This is what we mean by a nested property. The rate is nested in the loan which is nested in the account. The syntax for accessing nested property is still to use Java notation. In this case, the initial attribute here is the attribute that is stored at one of our scopes, followed by the property name, and then if that first property is an object, we might access one of its properties. We can also use this notation to substitute for the first one. Both of these are equivalent. Here we use attribute, again the stored Java bean or map. In the square bracket we provide the property and its key or its key. And then with dot notation we can access the property that is nested inside of the first property. For our account that holds a loan example, we might access the rate of the loan which is stored in the account like this. Alternatively, we can use the second notation. You can also use mathematical or logical expressions with the JSP language. To do so, we need some symbols for operations or operators. The expression language operators are basically the same as Java operators, perhaps not as extensive. The expression language has operators for both mathematical expressions and logical expressions. Here are the expression language mathematical operators. You'll note they're, they're the familiar ones starting with your parentheses all the way to your negation or subtraction. For a couple of these in expression language, we can alternatively use a keyword. For example, for division, we have a choice of using the slash or the word div. Similarly, for modulus, we can use the percent sign or the word mod. In terms of precedence, the parentheses would take first. It's used to change the order of precedence. So what's inside a parentheses will be handled no matter where it is in the expression before things that are outside of those parentheses. Next, division, multiplication, and modulus take equal precedence. They will be handled in the order from left to right. Similarly, addition and subtraction also share precedence level. Here are the expression language logical operators. 
They should look familiar to you as Java programmers. Double equal sign for equals through the NOT operator. Finally, the expression language includes a couple of other operators. One of those is empty. An example you might use is empty x. This is like an if statement, asking is x empty? It's going to return true if the value of a variable is null or an empty string. The question mark operator allows us to use an if then type of construction to return a value to our view. For example, we might have the expression x question mark then a value y and another value z. This would mean check out x. If it's true, then let's return the value of y. Otherwise, return the value of z. Let's see a few examples of these in action. Here's an example of a mathematical expression that would calculate the Celsius temperature from a given Fahrenheit temperature. Notice it looks just like a Java mathematical expression and uses all the basic operators and even a page level variable. Where I've used temperature, I could also include things like access to Java bean properties at that point. Here I have a logical expression that uses the same temperature page level variable and checks whether or not it's greater than 32 and less than 212 between freezing and boiling point of water in Fahrenheit temperature. This one will simply return the value of true, so the word true would show up on the page. Now if I want to use a condition to return a different value, I would need to use an expression like this. Here, the condition, is temperature greater than 32, is evaluated. If it is, for example, temperature is 60, it's going to return a value of warm, and the word warm would appear on the page. Otherwise, if temperature is less than 32, meaning that temperature greater than 32 is false, it will return the word cold. Earlier, we discussed several implicit objects that you have access to using Java expression language, namely the page, request, session, and application objects. We use those to explicitly set the scope of the bean we want to access. It turns out that there are some other implicit objects that we can use. In this table, we see about seven or eight implicit objects. Most of them use the data type map. Take a moment to look at each implicit object and read its description. Let's see a few examples of some of these implicit objects in action. Here's an example where we have a request parameter that holds the loan rate. So we can use param loan.rate. If the request parameter is a loan object, we're accessing its rate property. Here's an example where we're using the header implicit object which will hold all of the items that are sent along with the request in the header of the HTTP request. The header allows us access to all of the data sent in the header portion of the HTTP request. For example, we can access the user agent. We can also use Java expression language to access implicit cookie objects. Note the syntax here. We specify the cookie object, then using dot notation, we specify the name of the particular cookie that we want, and in this case, I'm asking for the value of the cookie. Now that you have a general overview of the JSP expression language, the next step is to gain experience by using it in your dynamic web applications. For more about the JSP expression language, please visit the references shown here. This video was written, narrated, and produced by Dr. Craig A. Piercy. The background music is locally sourced by Jason Farnham from the YouTube Audio Collection. This has been a Piercy production.